Hey guys, Zom Fox here, and today I wanted to discuss what each team needs to improve upon the most for 2023. This is about what aspect of each team needs to improve. This isn't based on, you know, the wide receiver group, you know, the running backs, the defensive backs. This is an overall aspect, what part of their game needs to improve the most to be successful in 2023. This is going to be by alphabetical list of, you know, the team names or, or the team cities. So we're going to start with Birmingham, and we are going to end with Pittsburgh. So without further ado, let's get started. Starting off, we have the Birmingham Stallions. The thing that this team needs to improve on the most is just passing. It might be a kind of a shock to you, to everyone, as Jamar Smith for a while was the quarterback of this team and was in the MVP race, but overall their passing game until the playoffs was actually pretty weak compared to everything else. Because you have to understand, this team was basically great in everything. You could say rushing, but by the end of the season, Bo Scarborough helped rejuvenate this rushing t to an insane amount. The reason I have passing is the fact that while they were 4th in yards passing, which is solid, they were 7th in completion percentage. They had the 2nd most sacks taken as 2nd in sacks taken. That's like, you know, the bad way. And then 2nd in large yards lost from sacks is also bad. So they got sacked the 2nd most to anybody for their 2nd most yards, as well as having the 2nd lowest completion percentage. This is despite having an all-USFL guard on their team, as well as a quarterback that proved to be good enough to win the title game when the other guy got hurt, as they were both really solid overall. The Jamar Smith-Alex Magoo tandem was decent, but this was really the only part of their game that was pretty weak. Their defense was overall solid. Their turnovers were pretty good. It was just their overall passing wasn't the best. They had the four, tied for the fourth most interceptions thrown and the tied third most passing TDs. So they're almost kind of caught, you know, in that sense of they were about even in that, in a sense. But overall, this isn't the worst part as this team just really didn't have that much bad about it. But overall, if you're going to look at anything... For a team that had excellent receivers, Victor Bolden, as well as Marlon Williams, this is probably the weakest part of the team was passing. As for the Houston Gamblers, it is second halves. I'm not joking. This might sound like, you know, ah oh, funny, but no, really, the second halves of games is this team's biggest letdown. I don't need to point to any step. Yes, their third down percentage was abysmal. It was like 22%, which is horrid. But their overall performance in second half of games is without a doubt the biggest flaw of this team. I already mentioned this stat in my coach's video where they had nine separate halftime leads. They went three and six in those games. Here's the stat that really shows it though and why I'm not just, you know, BSing with this. In the first half of games during this year, they had a plus 50 point differential. That meant that on average in every game they were heading into halftime with a five point lead. That is very solid. In the second half of games, they were negative 62. So they were losing the second halves by about six points. What does that mean? That means that you're losing games by about one point, which guess what? That's exactly what they did. They lost so many games in a one-score game because they either let down a touchdown at the end or didn't score at the end. Yes, they had some turnovers. They had some other flaws, running ball, stuff like that, but that might be due to injuries. But the fact that their second half versus first half point differential is this staggering shows where the issue truly lies. In the first half, they're fantastic. They get the job done. They score on either side of the ball. Even their defense could score. But in the second half of games is when a lot of letdowns would happen. They need to come into this next season and someone needs to fully just kind of bash into everyone's head the idea of playing winning football in the second half. Don't turn the ball over. Have long drives that can get you a field goal at least. Don't let up game-winning drives like every other week. This is definitely the one part of the Gamblers that truly was the worst. As for the formerly Tampa Bay Bandits, now Memphis Showboats, everything having to do with turnovers is what this team struggled at. They were the worst at turnover differential as they were the only team to hit double digits on either way, being at negative 10. So every game they were going in essentially down one turnover. They were also last in takeaways. They had the least amount of takeaways total, which was due to the fact they were 7th in fumble recoveries and interceptions gotten. And then in terms of giveaways, they were worse at that too. They had 20 separate giveaways as they were tied for first in both interceptions thrown and fumbles lost. Turnovers are arguably the most important stat of all. If you have a good turnover differential, in theory, you're going to have a great record and vice versa. And this team, as we mentioned before, only beat non-playoff teams. When you have stats like this, this is why. 
Because when you go against the good teams and you're giving away the ball and not taking it away, you're going to lose games because you're giving good teams another chance to score or keeping yourself from scoring. That's what this team needs to improve upon. If they can, they should be an all right team, if not a good team next year. As for the Michigan Panthers, it is the overall special teams of the team. Basically, every single part of the special teams unit, returning, punting, kicking, kickoffs, was all basically bad. The only thing they were good at was the touchback percentage. As unlike the NFL, in the USFL, having a high kickoff touchback percentage is a great thing, because on average, if you allow kickoffs, they're going to get the ball about like 30, 35 versus, you know, the 25. So that was solid. But everything else they were bad at. They, had the, they were 7th in punt net average, they were 8th in both return stats, they were 5th in extra point percentage, and 6th in field goal percentage. So while their like, kicking for points wasn't terrible, their return game was. These are those marginal stats that are a huge deal in a lot of games, and the fact that you can't get those extra yards returning is really bad. When your punt return average is literally 8 yards, that's pretty bad. And then when your kick return yard average is 20, that's alright, but it's not as bad, though still pretty terrible, as that's saying that if you get the ball at the 1 yard line, you're only getting to the 20, so if you think about it like that, that's what makes you realize why it's pretty bad. But the punt return average being 8 is just terrible. You need to be able to get the ball farther downfield to help your offense. Especially when you have a team that has very questionable quarterback play during most of the year, this is something that helps your team avoid that problem. As for kicking, they literally lost a game due to missing a chip shot field goal. The special teams unit was the biggest flaw of the Michigan Panthers last year as a whole. Because even though the quarterback play was pretty bad, there were a couple games that was really due to other things that kind of hindered them, and this is proof of that. As for the New Jersey Generals, there really isn't anything that bad about them except for kicking. They were 7th in both field goal and extra point percentage, and that's really the only thing about this team that was bad. I'm not even joking. There was nothing else about them that truly was bad. They had an awesome run game. They had a very excellent and efficient pass game. Their defense was solid. They didn't turn the ball over a ton. They got enough. It was, and even punting was decent. Kicking though was the only thing that they kind of were weak at. But aside from that, they were overall probably the most well-rounded team in the entire league. I could have said coaching because I've always said that the playoff game was solely on Mike Riley's shoulders. But aside from that one game, Mike Riley's still a hell of a coach. So the only thing that really was bad was kicking. If they can improve that, they should be really good next year. For the Breakers, I said the passing offense. The overall passing offense was definitely this team's biggest weakness. Yes, Kyle Slaughter was an all-USFL quarterback, but just like I've talked about in the past, he really only won it due to the fact that he played basically every game up to when it was done as the voting was the first nine weeks of the season. He really wasn't that good. He was okay, but a lot of games they pretty much lost due to his passing. And the proof is in the fact that they are the only team in the entire league that threw more picks than passing touchdowns. They're it. No other team, not the Maulers or Panthers who had a ton of quarterback issues, you know, not the Bandits, despite the fact that I've believed that Tomu wasn't that good last year. The Breakers were the only team to do that. They threw 11 touchdowns to 11 interceptions. They also took a good amount of sacks at 17. And then overall, their turnover differential wasn't good. It was fifth in the league. And that was really due to the interceptions that they did throw. And so you look at them and you go, well, what's really great about them? You know, their defense was awesome. They were the best defense in the league. Their kicking game was one of the best in the league. So those are both good. Their running game wasn't the best, but they had the league's leading rusher. So, that leaves passing. Passing was their weakest part. Especially when you look at the fact they were 7th in yards per pass attempt. That's a very telling stat, as it says that every time they pass the ball, they are the second worst at that. As their overall yards per pass attempt was 5.7, which is pretty pathetic. This team was definitely the weakest part of them was passing. But with Slaughter being gone, we'll see how they do if they do decide to keep Patterson as their QB. I wonder how that's going to work out, but we'll see next year. As for the Philadelphia Stars, the biggest thing that they need to improve on is basic defense. Now, what I mean by basic defense isn't these eye-popping things like the fact that they were first in takeaways and turnover differential, which was due to the defense, or the fact they were like top three in sacks. What I'm talking about is the fundamental rule of defense. Can you stop the other team from getting third and fourth down conversions? Can you get your team offense back on the field by not allowing a long drive by the opponent's offense. 
In that regard, the Stars' defense was bad. They were sixth in points allowed. They were dead last at rush yards allowed. They were sixth in passing yards allowed. And for all the turnovers they did have, they were one of three teams that didn't score a defensive touchdown at all. So, yes, Adam Rodriguez with his sacks was a huge help. Yes, Channing Stribling's interceptions was insane. But when you look at it at its core, the Stars' defense really wasn't that good. And it did rear its ugly head in the playoffs against the Stallions, as the defense is what truly let the team down. As even though, yes, there was the pick six thrown by the offense, but aside from that, the defense still allowed over 20 points in the, in the bit most important game of the year. The defense, at its core, wasn't that good. Yes, they could get turnovers, but when they weren't getting turnovers, they were allowing long drives. They were essentially like Trayvon Diggs in the 2021 NFL season, just just that. You either are getting an interception or you're getting burnt deep. That was basically the version of this Stars team. They were either going to take the ball away, going to get you a sack, or you're going to go on this long drive to score or just take time off the clock. If the Stars can improve on that, this team is going to be really scary even with just someone at quarterback since it probably be Cookus if he comes back to the USFL since we don't know if he's staying in the NFL, but we'll see. But I feel like with any quarterback, this team could be decent as long as their defense just improves in that aspect. Last but not least, we have the Pittsburgh Maulers. Yes, I could easily do a haha funny Kirby Wilson trash, that's the worst part of the team or thing that needs to improve the most, but objectively... It's their rushing offense. Unlike the Breakers, where the Breakers had a very decent running game and their passing game was truly just bad because they were bad, the passing offense in the Mars, I think, was a lot hindered due to the rushing offense. To have a great passing attack, it's really helpful to have a decent running game as the play action can work, and that's a huge help for passing. And especially when you look at Curry Wilson, who literally his whole career as coaching was running backs. It's really shocking that this team wasn't that good at running the ball. They were supposed to be great in the line, great in the trenches, and then great at running. They were 7th in basically every key stat. Yards per rush, longest rush of the year, rushing touchdowns, and rushing yards. I bring up the longest rush only because he is a rushing guy, you know, running back guy, and it is insane they didn't get a longer one than 37. But those... Stats show this team wasn't the best at running. The Bandits and Gamblers both kind of swapped a couple of them. But at least with those teams, the quarterback was very solid at running for the Bandits and Taumu. And for the Gamblers, you could say it was due to Mark Thompson being hurt a couple games. But the Maulers, no. They had Garrett Groshek. They had Madre London. They had four separate quarterbacks. And at least like at least a couple of them were decent movers. Love and Vad Lee were both really solid at moving. So when you look at it, it really was just... Overall, a terrible rushing offense. If this rushing game is better, it can help the passing game, and it can make Kirby Wilson actually use his strengths for his advantage. Yes, it probably would have helped if Devion Smith didn't get cut, you know, for wanting, you know, pizza. But the fact is, they still had good running backs. There's no excuse for them to be that bad at running the ball, especially with a coach who only does that. If they can improve at rushing, they could really be a decent team, as their defense was pretty sneaky good last year. Like, not like good, like, you know, awesome defense, but it was all right. So, I guess we'll see. So, that's it for what aspect every team needs to improve on the most for next year. I will do what play what players are needed, you know, for positions and stuff like that eventually. As we're still kind of waiting to see exactly who goes back to the USFL, who goes to the XFL, who stays in the NFL. We don't know that for sure, and especially with the draft upcoming, and we don't know for sure who's eligible, who's in that draft, as well as signings. I decided to just do this. This is a really clear-cut way to see what needs to be improved the most upon these teams. So, naturally, we've got to wait and see for all this. This has been ZomFox. If you enjoyed this content, want to be notified as soon as I upload any video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. And as always, have a great night.